All right, let's get started. Hello, my name is Hadley Heath Manning. I am Vice President for Policy with Independent Women's Forum and Independent Women's Law Center. I'm proud to represent these organizations today. Uh, welcome to our press conference to save sisterhood. Uh, oral argument just concluded in our, in our case. And uh, I wanna say that our organization has worked for a long time to ensure that women have equality. Women and men are equal, but they are not the same. And so when this case came along, it fits squarely within our efforts to defend women's rights, women's spaces, women's sports, women's privacy, women's safety, women's equal opportunities. And we couldn't be prouder to stand here today with these young women, these plaintiffs in this lawsuit. Um, and so it is my pleasure today to introduce Mae Mailman, who's director of Independent Women's Law Center. And she's gonna speak to you all about our case. Hi, as Hadley mentioned, my name's May Mailman, and I am the director of the Independent Women's Law Center, and I'm proud to be the lead counsel here on appeal for uh, the Westenbrook versus Kappa Kappa Gamma case. And all of us have something we could and would rather be doing than policing the Kappa director's unlawful insertion of men into a women's only sorority. We could have a root canal, it would be more pleasurable than <laughs> than trying to get men out of a sorority. However, we are doing this so that other people don't have to. So that when you send your girl to a girl's camp, that you know that words have meaning and that directors are constrained by their bylaws and can't coerce and force and lie and be dishonest with all the members about what it is that we're do that they are doing. And so that was our argument here today. So what happened in court today? The court did not want to address what is a woman because they know what it is. And so the court was looking to try and find small reasons to not hear this case. They were trying to say that there might not be appellate jurisdiction. They were trying to say that maybe demand, which is required for a derivative suit, wasn't properly pled, that there, the demand might not have been futile, that there might be a way to amend this complaint. They were trying to figure out any way to resolve this case because the core of this case, the core of this case, which is when bylaws say that an organization is for women, is that obvious and when you secretly, secretly and dishonestly try and change that, is that wrong? They know the answer to that is yes. And so why are they trying to avoid that? They're trying to avoid that because somehow there have been pressures in society that have minimized the importance of women and women's spaces and made it okay for people to act like they've forgotten what a woman is. And so that's why we're here. It is not okay. Americans are not in, in favor. They're not uh, okay with minimizing women's spaces and we shouldn't have to ask for it. We shouldn't have to argue for it. We shouldn't have to say, here's why I think I need my women's space. Women's spaces should be protected, period. And like full, sort, full stop. And for women to have to explain why men are not women is harmful to women. So we're hopeful uh, this is not the end of the road, that we are going to, Independent Women's Center, uh, Law Center is gonna continue to be there to support women no matter what. We're gonna be here to support these women no matter what, because they deserve the sorority that they signed up for, and that's a women's only sorority. Thank you. Hello everyone and good morning. My name is Hannah Holtmeyer. I'm a junior at the University of Nebraska, formerly the University of Wyoming. I'm a Kappa Kappa Gamma sister and a plaintiff in the case argued this morning against Kappa Kappa Gamma. I never thought I'd have to fight to define what a woman is. Seems like that should be pretty common sense. Women and men are biologically different. We've watched this issue destroy not only sororities and sisterhoods, but sports, locker rooms, prisons, and other intimate women's spaces and opportunities. And still, there are those who haven't learned the lesson that forcing women to share these spaces with men never ends well. Women are the ones losing out and being harmed along the way. It's sad to think that there are individuals out there, while they are in the minority, who don't see this as an issue. As someone who experienced this firsthand, I was ignored, belittled, and seen as a bigot Simply for, simply for saying that I should be asked to consent 
before having a man forced onto me and my sorority sisters as a sorority member. I can attest to the toll it takes on young women, mentally knowing that at any point I could walk into the bathroom or step out of the shower to a 6'2", 260 pound man is terrifying. To girls across our great country and their mothers and fathers, if you think you're in a situation where this won't affect you, think again. Odds are, if we don't speak up to at least define women's spaces, you, your daughter, or any other women in your life will be affected. Getting out ahead of this issue is important to stop it be before it becomes an even larger problem. It's not right, it's not fair, and I'll continue to fight until we win. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Madeline Raymar, and I am a current Kappa Kappa Gamma member at the University of Wyoming, and I am also a plaintiff in this case. To begin, sororities are spaces where women are given the opportunity to grow and develop throughout college. They are designed to turn women into leaders and help them discover who they are in a supportive and safe sisterhood. I have grown so much during my time in a sorority, and I want other young women to be able to have that experience too, without the presence of a man. Women should not be punished or silenced like me and my sisters were, simply for speaking out against a man in our women's only space, no matter what the man is wearing or how he identifies. Our Kappa Kappa Gamma headquarters completely let me and my Kappa sisters down by allowing this to happen and turning their backs on the women in their organization. We were promised a strictly women's organization where only women were allowed. We felt extremely uncomfortable with a male's presence uh, in the house as we had to walk through the halls in a towel to our shared bathroom where he could do the same. No woman should ever have to feel this level of discomfort in their own home, especially after not being, uh, not being given any say in the matter. Co-ed spaces are everywhere, but when women are given a promise of privacy and safety, that promise cannot be broken unilaterally by leaders, like the leadership of Kappa Kappa Gamma and the National Panhellenic Council, who stopped caring about us as, as women. To conclude, we stand here before you today fighting for young and current girls and women who dreamed of a sisterhood as we once did. Thank you. Hello. My name is Ali Kogan, and I stand before you today as a Kappa Kappa Gamma alumni and plaintiff in this case. Um, I graduated from the University of Wyoming in May of 2023 with a degree in agricultural business and a concentration in farm and ranch management. I am proud to stand here fighting for sis the sisterhood that was stripped for me and my sisters at the University of Wyoming. This fight doesn't just affect sorority girls. It is so much bigger than that. This is important to everyone who has a sister, a mother, a daughter, a niece, an aunt, or any other kind of important women that you have in your life. We need to do a better job at protecting our women and preserving their rights to single sex opportunities and spaces. Just one opportunity being taken away from a girl and given to a man is one too many. It's discrimination, plain and simple. Women and men are very different in many different ways, and I don't need to give you a biology lesson to explain that. A sorority was important to me because it allowed me to strengthen many professional skills so that I could be successful in my future career. Um, having this opportunity allowed me to be more successful in my now very male-dominated career path. There are women in our sorority who have been sexually assaulted and allowing a man into our women only sorority strips them of their safe haven and suddenly makes it a place where they are on edge. Sororities are supposed to be your home away from home where you have your sisters there to support you. It is incredibly unfair to strip us of that sense of security and put us in a situation where we are constantly on edge and have to have our guard up. To my great disappointment, the psychological toll that this experience had on my sisters and me has been overlooked by the Kappa Kappa Gamma organization. Going from sleeping with my door open every night to hoping it was locked should be enough to make people realize what an issue that this is. It is easy for someone to look away and say, it doesn't affect me because I'm not in a sorority. But the sad reality is that for women, we are in danger of much more than losing women-only sororities. The pure essence of womanhood and women's rights is being eroded. Being forced to compete against males in sports is causing harm to women and taking away opportunities. Female prisoners are now at risk of being raped because convicted men are being allowed to enter women's prisons. That's cruel and unusual punishment, if you ask me. 
Men are using our locker rooms and bathrooms and exposing our children to male genitalia. If we do not put a stop to this, we are putting generations of women at risk. So my question for everyone is why are we waiting for something to happen to young women instead of being proactive and protecting them before something happens? Women are worth fighting for, sisterhood is worth fighting for. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jalen Westenbrook. I'm one of the six plaintiffs in this case. I'm in miss my senior year at the University of Wyoming. Giving meaning to women's spaces is important because men can invade women's spaces at any time if we don't stand up and protect the promises that were made to us. We were all just normal college girls living an all women's sorority experience and we were suddenly forced to live and promote a woke agenda. Sororities are meant to be intimate spaces shared between all female members. We get dressed together for special events. We have sleepovers. We use communal bathrooms and showers without thinking twice. We shouldn't have to consider the comfort of our own home. But this is exactly what happens when men invade women's private only spaces without our consent. The purpose of sororities is for young women to grow throughout their college years. This is exactly what I signed up for my freshman year. I was so excited for. One unique aspect of sororities is that there are girls brought together with different backgrounds, experiences, and majors. But when a man enters these safe spaces, it disrupts the sisterhood young women seek. And it only creates a divide and ruins the dynamic of a sorority. One of the most alarming feelings that we've faced is that adults not living in our house or personally affected by the situation are the ones telling us to be okay with everything. We were gaslighted into believing that we were the problem, that we needed to sit down and shut up. All women should have the right to speak for their own safe spaces and not be threatened by outside voices. The sorority told us to voice any concerns before accepting a male member, but no action was taken to acknowledge our concerns. Instead, we were told to leave if we were uncomfortable. It is not okay for someone tell you, to tell you to leave your own home in order to feel comfortable. My sisters and I are committed to standing up for all sorority women, past and future generations, to have that same sorority experience that we once had. The leaders of Kappa Kappa Gamma owe it to women to keep their promise for a women-only sisterhood. Thank you. Um, thank you to our plaintiffs for speaking. Next, we're going to hear from some of our partners. We are so proud at Independent Women's Forum and Independent Women's Law Center to be part of the most ideologically diverse women's movement of our time. This should not be a politically divisive issue. It's a very straightforward issue. And so next we're gonna hear from some of our partners at Women's Declaration International USA, from Women's Liberation Front, and from other very important supporters of our effort to save sisterhood. So let's proceed. Good morning. My name is Kara Dansky, oh, and I'm the president of the US chapter of Women's Declaration International. In the fight to protect the sex-based rights of women and girls, People often ask, where are the feminists? I'm here today to tell you that the feminists are standing strong in support of women-only spaces and in support of the plaintiffs in this important lawsuit. Women's Declaration International is the leading global organization that works to advance women's sex-based rights all over the world. It does so by promoting the Declaration on Women's Sex-Based Rights, which challenges the discrimination and oppression we experience from the replacement of the category of sex with that of so-called gender identity in law and policy. Our work is grounded in leftist radical feminist principles. We are leftists, we are feminists. We are lesbians, bisexual, and straight women. We fight for all women and girls as a sex class. Article 8 of the Declaration on Women's Sex-Based Rights reaffirms the need for the elimination of violence against women and girls. This includes the right of women and girls to have female-only spaces. Until recently, everyone in society seemed to understand that men who invaded women's intimate spaces were rightly shamed and charged with criminal offenses. 
That understanding seems to have evaporated recently with the embrace of gender identity, including in KKG's perverted policy of admitting not only women, but also, quote, individuals who identify as women, whatever that means. Today, if a man says that he is transgender or that he has a gender identity different from his sex, our laws, policies, and institutions simply hold the doors wide open for him to enter places where women and girls are nude or otherwise in a state of vulnerability or relying on the type of community that only all female spaces like sororities can provide. It is inhumane that institutions like KKG permit and even encourage this. We are a nonpartisan organization that works with groups across the political spectrum. Speaking solely for myself, I am a lifelong Democrat who is ideologically left of the Democratic Party. From a leftist, radical feminist perspective, so-called gender identity is a regressive, sexist, homophobic concept that has no business being, being enshrined in law or policy. As we say in our friend of the court brief in this case, sex is grounded in material reality, whereas gender, including its linguistic derivatives like gender identity, transgender, and cisgender, is grounded in regressive sex stereotypes. And the idea that a man who, quote, identifies as a woman is in fact a woman is patently harmful to women and girls as a sex class. I am a daughter of the second wave movement for women's liberation, which hailed from the political left. Those feminists did not fight to secure women's sex-based rights only to have them thrown away at the altar of the regressive concept of gender identity. So for anyone tempted to ask, where are the feminists? I'm here today to say that we're right here standing alongside these amazing female plaintiffs, plaintiffs to say no to men in women's spaces. Thank you. One, because it's mine, and two, because it looks silly dangling. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren Bone. I am the legal director of Women's Liberation Front. Um, we are a national feminist organization that fights for women, the rights of women and girls. Specifically, we fight for women's reproductive rights, fight against sexual exploitation, and we fight against gender ideology. The idea that you can identify as a woman relies on conflating the idea of being female with femininity. And that is regressive and misogynistic. It is not progressive. It is not the future of women's rights. Women and girls deserve to feel and be safe in their spaces. There is a reason why we have male restrictions in sorority houses. There's a reason we have sex separation in locker rooms, in changing rooms, in prisons, in shelters. There's a reason we have women who are chaperoning and supervising girls and not men and providing personal care, providing pap smears and other medical cares. It is because women deserve privacy, dignity, and safety. It is men who statistically pose a risk to women and it is not a matter of identity. It is, isn't because all men perpetrate harm, but it's because some men do, and we don't know which ones until it's too late. So the other side in this case wants to invoke the idea of feminism and progressivism and women's rights groups to make this look like a partisan political issue, and it's not. This is an anti-feminist attack on women, and we won't stand for it. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Patsy Levang, and I'm the former national president of the Kappa Kappa Gamma Foundation. I was a member for over 50 years until I recently got kicked out. And I got kicked out of a lifetime membership because I spoke up on behalf of the women in Wyoming who were bravely fighting against men coming into their organization. The sorority provided me with some really very great things. And those were leadership building, scholarship guidance, and most importantly, friendship with women who supported me. And they taught me at that level when I was an undergraduate that we aspire to those things that are good, that are true, that are beautiful in life and in sisterhood. 
And striving toward that has brought me to the place of saying that young women coming forward in the future deserve to have that opportunity. They deserve to have a sorority where they can live with their sisters and enjoy female camaraderie. This is the civil rights issue of our lifetime. The debunking of what a woman is has never been questioned. And we cannot go forward willy-nilly defining woman as anything that hits the mind of the political agenda of that moment. The current leadership in Kappa has taken on that political agenda. They have made their decision to allow men who say they're women to come into the sorority and live there. That is inappropriate and for them it's no risk at all because they're not living in a sorority house where these men can invade. They are living in separate places across the United States of America in complete calm, saying, yes, you young women, you take this on. We don't want to, but we think it's important because it's a part of the political agenda of the day. So women-only spaces for prisons, for shelters, they've all been mentioned, for sororities, for um, anything that a woman has valued as a private space, a place where she can go and be herself, are being jeopardized. So I say again, this is the civil rights issue of our time, that women must not give up this fight until we've reclaimed, reclaimed this already surrendered ground. Thank you. Good morning and what a lovely day to be in Denver, Colorado, fighting for women's rights. I'm Cheryl Tuck Smith, and I became a member of Kappa Kappa Gamma at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming. So when I found out that my beloved Kappa, Kappa chapter took a male masquerading as a woman as a member, I was disturbed. I was saddened, and I just could not believe it happened in Wyoming because Wyoming was the first state in the nation to give women the right to vote, the right to own property, and the right to hold public office. Why in the world would we give that back to men? Now, when our founders put in the bylaws that this is a fraternity for women, there was no confusion in 1870 over what a woman is. You see them all standing here. So when I found out these young, brave actives were willing to fight, I decided I was going to back them. And I engaged with other Kappas throughout the nation that agreed with me in this fight that sororities should remain for women only, not pretend women. So what I did when I found out these plaintiffs were ordered by Judge Johnson to disclose their names in this lawsuit, I emailed a letter to hundreds of alumni associations throughout the nation. And in that letter, I explained to people, my campus sisters, what was going on and asked for their support. And at the time, I was, had been a member of Kappa for 53 years. I'm just a young chicken, you know, but I've been around for 53 years in Kappas. And for the audacity that I had to speak out Kappas kicked me out. But you know what they did? They fueled the fire. Yeah. I am not giving up. I am backing these women, and I will continue to fight because it is our job as alumni to make certain that these women have a secure private place while they're in college where they can develop their skills and not be surrounded by men that pretend to be women. Thank you, and keep up the fight. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Riley Gaines. I am an ambassador for Independent Women's Forum. I'm a recent college graduate myself, of course, a young woman. And I was dumbfounded 
today. I was demoralized and entirely disheartened listening to the argument of the opposition of Kappa Kappa Gamma in that courtroom. Just to very briefly summarize most of this stuff word for word, what we heard from the Kappa attorney. Woman is undefined. It's not a word that has a singular definition. It has multiple definitions. It's unquestionably not defined at that. Kappa has a duty to interpret this word as they wish. They didn't need to announce this interpretation or definition because they didn't need to be transparent. Uh, one of the judges asks, what if that interpretation included cisgender men? If you can interpret this word woman however you wish, could cisgender men join? To which she responded, we don't have the research if cisgender men would be a reasonable interpretation for that word woman. That is what we heard inside that courtroom today. Again, um, to just speak to the feelings of, of demoralization. But anyways, what am I doing here? Uh, by now, my story is seemingly well known. I was a swimmer at the University of Kentucky where I very proudly finished my career as a 12-time NCAA All-American, a uh, five-time SEC champion, the SEC record holder in the 200 butterfly, uh, making me one of the fastest Americans of all time, two-time Olympic trial qualifier, SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year, SEC Community Service Leader of the Year, but really all of that to say it's a lifelong journey to compete at and ultimately be successful at the highest level. But I was willing to make those sacrifices. I knew what this entailed. But my senior year, what I didn't know that I had signed up for was to be forced to compete against a man, a less than mediocre man at that. This is a six foot four, 22 year old man swimming at University of Pennsylvania who swam three years on the men's team prior to deciding he would switch to the women's team. To where no one's surprise, he went from ranking in the 500s nationally to that next year winning a national title on the women's side. Uh, he and I actually raced in the 200 freestyle, which almost impossibly enough resulted in a tie Meaning, of course, we went the exact same time down to the hundredth of a second. But really what sparked and fueled my advocacy journey that I've been on these past two years was that despite tying at our national championships, the, the pinnacle of our sport, we go behind the awards podium where the NCAA official looks at both Thomas and myself, Thomas towering over me, and he says, great job. I know you two tied, but we only have one trophy. So we're gonna give that trophy to Leah. Sorry, Riley, you don't get one. And when I asked the dreaded question of why, that no one, the question no one dared ask all season, I said, why are you adamant on giving the trophy to the man in the women's 200 free? I actually appreciate his honesty uh, because the NCAA official looked at me and said, well, I'm sorry, but we have been advised as an organization that when photos are being taken, it's crucial that the trophy is in Leah's hands. That was all I needed to hear. It was in that moment, honestly, that I realized what a silly thought, what a naive thought, thinking people would do the right thing unprovoked, whether that was our coaches, whether that was the NCAA, whether that was people with political power, our parents, some other swimmer. What a naive thought, because if we, as women, as female athletes, aren't willing to stand up for ourselves, how in the world could we expect someone else to stand up for us? Which is why I'm so proud of these girls. Um, what you might not know about that national championships, yes, you know about the unfair competition. Some of you might know about what the locker room looked like, being forced to undress next to, again, this six foot four, 22 year old male, fully intact, fully exposing himself inches away from where we were simultaneously undressing. And let's be very clear, no, we weren't asked for our consent. We did not give our consent to be exposed to this and simultaneously be exploited. That used to be called sexual harassment. That used to be called voyeurism or indecent in exposure. And a DA would walk into that locker room and immediately arrest that man. But no, now it's applauded. It's considered brave, that action, or inspiring, or whatever other virtuous word they want to use. You probably don't know about the silencing that we faced, the intimidation, the threats, the risk that we face for daring to question to merely question um, a male being allowed to enter our sports. I guess that still didn't really answer the question of why I'm here. I was fortunate enough to be able to connect with these girls, gosh, over a year ago now, and to hear about what they were going through. 
Uh, I was never a part of a sorority, admittedly. I didn't know much about sororities. Uh, we called ourselves our swim team. I was the captain of 40 girls, so it felt like a sorority in its own right. And we called ourselves the Kappa Kappa Goggles. Um, I, but I didn't know anything about sororities, but what I realized in talking with them, listening to them, share their perspectives, is that we are the same. The sisterhood that we were promised, it's the same as the team atmosphere that I was promised, right? The ability to lead, how to set goals and work to achieve those goals, resiliency, perseverance, time management, and hearing their stories, the trauma that they faced, the threats, the emotional blackmail, the risk, the vitriol, the stress, the anxiety, the physical and mental toll it took. Um, how could I not get involved with these girls? And I wanna ask you, how could you listen to these, these plaintiffs who so bravely stood before you and shared their experience? How in the world could anyone label them transphobic or anti-trans? Let's be very clear here. And I think that's important given the fact that there's media from certainly both sides of the aisle here. Let's be very clear on the stand that we have taken. And I speak for all of us when I say this. The stand that we have taken is not anti-anything. We are not standing against anything. We are standing for something, and what we are standing for is transparency. We are standing for privacy, we are standing for safety, we are standing for equal opportunity, we are standing for women. The stand that we have taken is pro-woman, not anti-anything. <laughs> These girls were promised sisterhood. But instead, Kappa Kappa Gamma gave them the brother that they never wanted. And look, that's not to say that Artemis, the male who identifies now as a woman, who has infiltrated their spaces, that's not to say that Artemis shouldn't join something similar to what Kappa promised these girls, to what these girls sought when they enrolled at the University of Wyoming. But he can find that in a fraternity because Artemis Lankford is, in fact, a man. It is not bigoted to say that, it's biology, it's objective reality, it's the truth. And when we disregard the truth, specifically for the purposes of the gender ideology movement, we disregard women. We belittle women and we erase women. And that is what we are here fighting today. Uh, a couple thanks to go out because honestly, um, I have been overwhelmed by the amount of encouragement and support that we have seen, uh, of course, today on the steps behind us in the courtroom. Uh, we had a gathering last night. Uh, the alumni who are here, alumni who have flown in, driven from all over the country, thank you guys uh, for standing strong, being steadfast in your fight for defending what you've benefited from. Um, to, of course, the wonderful groups, uh, whether that be WDI, Wolf, uh, the feminists over here who really have been, again, uh, dedicated to de protecting women's rights. Uh, to the parents of these plaintiffs, it takes strong parents to raise strong daughters, and you guys have done just that. And of course, to IWF, uh, really one of the, the leading women's organizations fighting for the sanctity of truth, uh, fighting for and defending women's rights to equal opportunity, privacy, uh, and safety. And so I'm honored to be a part of IWF. So thank you guys. And thank you, of course, to the media for being here. Riley's right. We're fighting for truth, for reality, for women, for the language, for sisterhood. And we will fight this fight in the sorority house. We'll fight it in the courthouse. We'll fight it in the state house. We'll fight it in the halls of Congress and we'll fight it in the court of public opinion as well. And we will not stop fighting until we prevail. This is going to conclude our press conference to save sisterhood. Thank you to the members of media who came here today. If you have follow-up questions for any of our speakers here today, I'm going to ask that you join us, Independent Women's Forum, Independent Women's Law Center media team here to my right, your left, a side of the podium, and you can do some pull-asides for follow-up questioning. Otherwise, this concludes our press conference. Thank you all so much.
Can I still? Yeah, if you need that water, water, but we invite you guys yeah. to the back right in the back. Ideally, if they need water, though, let's try.